as we discussed in some previous sessions 5G core network is going to be very different compared to the 4G core network which is typically called as EPC or Evolved Packet Core. Now what are going to be the difference in 5G core network we are going to discuss in this session. So this session is about 5G core architecture and my name is Sanjay Kumar and I am from NanoCell Networks. Now we talked about this, some of these topics the 4G and 5G networks are going to be very different where we are expecting latencies of uh, 1 millisecond compared to 10 to 100 millisecond in 4G network. The data rates of 20 Gbps compared to 1 Gbps in 4G where which is typically the 20 times of the peak data rate. The frequency channels are going to be up to 8 or maybe more than that 800 up to 800 megahertz kind of channel bandwidth. The core network is going to be work hard, hardware dependent in case of 4G. However, in 5G, it is going to be the cloud-based network enabled by SDN and NFE kind of technologies. The subscriber density, which is typically 100,000 subscriber per square kilometer, is going to be 10 to the power 6, which is nothing but 1 million subscriber per square kilometer. Typically, 4G networks were designed for uh, mobile broadband services. However, in 5G, we had different service vertical defined called as EMBB, URLCC, and MMTCC. Uh, sorry, MMTC, where EMBB talks about enhanced mobile broadband networks, URLLC talks about ultra reliable low latency communication, and MMTC talks about messy machine type communication or IoT kind of services. 4G networks were typically base station based network. And there were very very few implementations of small cells however 5g network is going to be very densified networks very dense networks which is typically the heterogeneous kind of networks moving on we have three different service verticals for 5g which is typically called as embb which is typically used for high data rates enhanced broadband hd video call and typically called as alternative of fttx which is nothing but fiber to the x MMTC talks about IoT kind of application, talking about large network, large number of devices, deeper penetration, and the power efficient end user devices. Where URLCC, a completely new services which has come up in 4, 5G, where we talk about highly reliable network and low latency network, which is typically suitable for V2 kind, X kind of application industrial automation and some kind of PS application which is nothing but public safety application. So we can have services like MCPTT which is nothing but mission critical push to talk services for these kind of services high reliability is required and that is where this uh, this particular URL CC vertical is going to play a major role. Now when we look at uh, the 5G core network we typically talk over various network functions here. So we have AMF which is similar to, somewhere uh, related to uh, some, somewhere similar to AM, uh, MME, SMF session management function, application function. We have UPF called as user plane function, UDM user data management. AUSF authentication service uh, authentication function now put together AUS and if UDM are doing some functions similar to the HSS where the data repository the data is stored in something called as UDR which is uniform uh, unified data repository PCRF is now called as PCF policy control function but we have come up with some new devices called as NSSF which is network slice, slice selection function and there is another one which is not mentioned in this particular picture called as NRF which is nothing but network repository function. So if we look at this picture this talks about the different interfaces like N4 interface between SMF and UPF, N22 interface between AMF and NSSF. So this particular picture is called as reference point architecture. This just gives a reference to an interface between two different network function. However, as we discussed earlier, all these network functions what we see in this picture, they are not going to be PNF. They are not going to be PNF which is typically called as physical network functions, they are all going to be VNFs, which is the virtual network functions. So all these network functions which we see in this picture are typically the virtual network function, virtual machines, which are created on the cloud infrastructure. And all these functions are defined in virtual network function or some software applications running on the cloud infrastructure.
However, when we look at these network devices, this is quick overview of all these network devices. AMF and access and mobility management, AUSF is authentication server function, PCF is policy control function similar to PCRF. NSSF is network slice selection function typically sub used for supporting slicing kind of services which we'll discuss later. NEF is network exposure function typically exposing your networks to the third party services. NRF network repository function which is the broker function which typically talks about all the network function it enables network functions to talk to each other and for that we have something called as NRF SMF is session management function which does all the session management part of it CHF is charging function UPF is user plane function typically done does the user plane part of it UDM is unified data management UDSF is unstructured data storage which we'll not discuss here in detail but just have some related some uh, data storage for the unstructured data NWDAF which is network data analytics we are going to have a lot of influence of ML and AI kind of services in case of 5G and that is where my network and data machine learning and artificial intelligence where network data analytics function is going to play a major role AF are typically the application services or application functions and UDR here is the data repository which is a centralized data repository which can be accessed by uh, UDM can be accessed by PCR uh, PCF PCF here somewhere here yeah PCF and can be accessed by network exposure functions also if you look at the actual communication all these functions they're typically connected by using something called as a service bus and that is why we call it as a service based architecture so all these network functions are defined with some kind of services here so which is typically an NSSF or NAUSF or NNEF they all communicate to each other by using some restful APIs restful APIs and that is why we call it typically a service based architecture they are all connected to each other by using a service bus so all the network function above this line here they are typically the control plane devices and below this what we have here is user plane and typically we have only one user plane function which is called as UPF or user plane function However, we have DN here, which was typically called as PDN in earlier networks, packet data network. And now we just call it as DN, data network. We have radio network here, which is typically 5G radio network, radio access network. And we normally call it as NR or new radio. Now SBA, uh, the service based architecture stack and interfaces, typically it runs on something called as RESTful APIs which is RESTful API stands for representational state transfer RESTful API based communication however it is typically little new for telecom networks it is a dominated uh, it is a very very dominating thing in IT network in most of the IT infrastructure all the communication happens on HTTP2 kind of protocol and on top of this what we are using here is a serialization protocol called a JSON JavaScript object notation all the messages are scripted in JSON format now when we look at this this is a major shift compared to all the traditional network where our traditional network used to talk in some proprietary protocol like GTP S1 AP or some other protocol similar to this however now all the protocols are going to be HTTP 2 kind of protocol where we are using commands like port get delete etc and JSON is the serialization protocol and we are using HTTP protocol to trans transport JSON format messages and RESTful API style. So this is the protocol stack for our SP. All the network function, virtual network function, they are using the exactly the same protocol stack, but the JSON messages are going to be different depending on what network interfaces we are talking about. 5G core network, what is the service based architecture? So for every NF and network function, these network function are either service producer or service consumer. So when we talk about the service consumer, service consumer is going to request for a service and the producer is going to reply for a service. However, any producer, any service producer can be consumer for some other services and any service consumer can be the service producer for 
another service right so all these things all these things what we see here are typically nf service operations and all these interfaces are called as svi which is nothing but service based interfaces and all the interactions are happening over http based protocol which is the messages like get put post update delete kind of messages what we are going to use between different virtual network functions so just to give an example in this case my producer can be let's say uh, amf the access and mobility management function is the service producer and my smf can be a service consumer so in this case whenever smf smf uh, smf requires any services any information it can send a request to amf and amf can respond for those particular service request now terminologies in 5g and 4g typically in 4g we used to call something called as iemei which is now called as pei permanent equipment identifier msisdn is called as gpsi mz is still there but mz instead of mz we use another another identity called as supi and suki supi subscriber permanent identity and subscriber concealed identity something similar to mme we have amf something similar to sk2 and p gateway user plane and control plane mixed we have smf and upf instead of hss we have udm instead of ocs we have chf charging function instead of pcrf we have pcf the dedicated bearers are now typically not really called as gbr flow but they are relating to some something to gbr flow that we'll understand in next couple of slides when we talk about qs earlier we had something called as pdn connection now it is which is called as pdu session the pdn packet data network are now called as dn data network and the apn access point name now called as dnn or also called as data network name one important thing to note here many of these things are very similar but they are not exactly same so this this thing we have to keep in mind however we are comparing amf and mme they are very similar but they are not exactly same so we have to keep bear this in mind everything what we have mentioned here is something similar but not exactly same now when we talk about 4g and 5g qs as we understand we had a concept of default bearer and dedicated bearer in 4g and our the lowest granularity what we had for quality of service implementation was the bearers so we have the data data radio bearers or else a default bearer and dedicated bearer so we had the minimum granularity of our quality of service uh, implementation was the bearer however in case of 5g there is a major difference in one particular pdu session so we have one pdu session here in one pdu sessions we can have multiple data radio bearers in every data radio bearers we can have multiple qs flows and in every qs flow we can have multiple sdfs which is nothing but service data flows however the minimum granularity for qs implementation the minimum granularity for the qs implementation is going to be the qs flow level right so what we are going to implement is the qs will be implemented the qs flow level so in in case of 4g if there are two services being used in one data radio bearer they are going to have exactly same quality of service experience however in case of 5g we have multiple qs flow within the same data radio bearer so i can have differential quality of service implementation within the same radio bearer however in the same radio bearer sorry in the same radio bearer we can have multiple qs flows and within the qs flow we can have multiple sdfs service data flows and every service data every service data flow are going to experience exactly the same qs treatment because they are kept within the same qs flow so just to summarize here in case of 4g our qs implementation happens at the granularity of data radio bearer however in case of 5g in certain case 4g it happens at data radio bearer level however in case of 5g the qs implementation happens on the qs flow level that's all about this particular video if you like this video please like and subscribe our channel and for more info please uh, feel free to visit www.nanocellnetworks.com thank you very much and Hope to see you again on this particular channel.